A poor miller had three sons. When he died, all that he left behind was a mill, a donkey, and a cat. Well, since I'm the oldest, said his first son, I'll take the mill. The second son quickly added, and I'm next. I'll take the donkey. They looked at their younger brother, Marquis. How, How lucky, lucky you are! are. You, you shall, shall have the cat. The brothers said, and laughed out aloud. The poor fellow shook his head as his brothers left. It was not fair at all. My brothers can make a fine living with a mill and a donkey, but what about me? I'm stuck with Puss," said Marquis, wringing his hands in despair. Puss had been listening. He stretched and yawned loudly. <sighs> now, now. You won't have to worry when I'm around. All I need is a bag and a handsome pair of boots, and I'll be able to take care of us both. Sure, you will," thought Marquis. But to be fair, he had seen Puss use many tricks to catch mice and rats. If nothing else, they wouldn't go hungry. Our father left us some property in his will. I can't help thinking that it's been divided unfairly. Do you remember what I got? My father has left me this cat. What am I supposed to do with it? You don't have to do anything with me. A talking cat? Did I really hear you speak, or am I dreaming? My dear master, please don't think that I'm useless. Just wait and see what I do. And you'll be happy that I belong to you. How can I be happy when I've only got a cat and nothing else? You will understand soon. But first, can you get me a pair of boots and a sack? Did you forget that I don't have any money? See if you can find a sack here. We'll get the cobbler to make you a pair of boots. Thank you. That's exactly what I need. Now that we have the sack. Let's go and get a pair of boots from the cobbler. Found a sack? You're a smart fellow. Come, we'll go and see the cobbler. I'll pay him for the boots later. Yes, this is the cobbler's workshop. I can get my boots here. This is the last pair of boots I have. Let it bring you luck. Thank you. These boots suit me perfectly. Soon, the cat was given his own pair of boots and the new bag that he had asked for. The boots fitted him perfectly, and he looked very smart. Puss packed a juicy cabbage and some bran in the bag, and slung it around his neck. He polished his whiskers and set out. Puss headed straight to a spot where there were plenty of rabbits. He had a great plan in mind. Puss opened the bag wide and hid behind a tree. Soon a rabbit came hopping by. He saw the cabbage and leapt straight into the bag. Whoosh! As quick as the wind, Puss grabbed the bag and tied it closed with a piece of string. With the rabbit in his bag. Puss walked straight over to the king's palace. He bowed low and presented him with the rabbit. <clears throat> Your Majesty said, "Puss in boots," in a royal voice. This humble gift comes from my master, Lord Marquis of Carabas. This was a fancy name that Puss had chosen for his master. What a thoughtful gift," said the king. Who loved roasted rabbit? The next time, Puss managed to catch a brace of partridges, and took them once again to the king. This is wonderful. Tell your master I'm very pleased," said the king, who loved partridge stew even more. This went on for two months. Puss was becoming an expert at catching game, and the king was getting plumper. First, I need a bait for the rabbit. What do you think rabbits love to eat? 
This is exactly what we need. No rabbit can resist the smell of a fresh cabbage. Get ready. When the rabbit comes closer, catch it. Got you. Thanks for your help. I will take this rabbit to the castle and offer it to the king. Puss knew a lot of things. He was such a clever cat. For instance, he knew just when and where the king would be out riding in his carriage with his daughter. I think that the Marquis and I should go out for a walk today, thought Puss one sunny Saturday. Puss took Marquis down to the riverside and spoke to his master. Today could be your lucky day. If things go to plan, you'll make a fortune, said Puss. Clip clop, cling clang. Puss heard the sound of a carriage approaching. They both looked into the distance. It was the king's carriage. What should I do? Marquis asked, ready to obey. He had grown happier with the food Puss brought in every day. Go and bathe in the river. I'll take care of everything else," said Puss. "Is that all?" cried Marquis. He pulled off his clothes and jumped into the river at once. Splash! Quickly, Puss hid his master's clothes behind a rock. Help! My master is drowning. Somebody save him! Puss wailed. He was trembling from head to foot. The king recognized Puss at once. He remembered all the lovely meals he had enjoyed thanks to the cat. The king jumped out of his carriage. Go and save him quickly! The king said to his servants. Puss said to the king. Your Majesty, some nasty thieves have stolen my master's clothes. Is that so? Don't worry. I'll find a suit for him," said the king. He ordered one of his servants to fetch some fine clothes. Soon, Marquis was pulled out of the water, and the king's servant handed over a handsome suit for him to wear. As soon as Marquis put on those clothes, he looked just like a prince. He stood tall and handsome, and smiled shyly at the princess. Surprise, surprise! The princess fell head over heels in love with Marquis. Master, I have a great idea. All you need to do is go and bathe in the river. I will take care of the rest. Well, all right. That's easy. While he's bathing, I need to hide his clothes. Can you think of a good place to hide them? Yes, this is a good place to hide them. The first task is done. We should wait for the king now. Can you see the coach? Your Majesty, please help! My master is drowning. Hurry up! Coachman, stop here! Somebody is calling for help. Help! Someone, help me, Your Majesty! I'm Puss in Boots. Do you remember me? My master decided to bathe. He went into a deep place, but unfortunately, he can't swim out of it. Ah! I remember you. It's you who brought me the presents, right? Wait, we'll save your master. Oh, thank you. Please save the Marquis of Carabas. Lucky! Hurry up and pull the Marquis out of the water. I must pull him out quickly, but I need a stick. Where will I find one? This is exactly what I want. Thank you for your help.
Here you are, dear Marquis of Carabas, safe on land again. Your Majesty, while my master was swimming, his wonderful suit has been stolen. Now he has no clothes to wear. I'll order one of the best suits to be sent from the royal cloakroom for your master. Thank you for your help. How can I pay you back? We would be delighted if you could join us on our journey. What do you say? Oh, of course. My master would be pleased to accompany you. Yes, I'd love to take up your offer and get better acquainted with you and your daughter. Then take a seat and let's go. I'm pleased to meet you, dear Marquis of Carabas. Puss grinned. Things were going just as he had planned. But he had more work to do. If you will excuse me, I'll go and make suitable arrangements to receive our king at the castle. Puss said. Marquis was puzzled because he didn't live in a castle. But he kept quiet. Puss ran ahead and met some men mowing the field. My good fellows, stop your work and listen. The king is coming this way, and you are all in grave trouble. The only way to save yourselves is to say that these fields belong to the Lord Marquis of Carabas. Puss announced. The mowers looked at Puss in surprise. They were scared. This Lord Marquis must be very powerful, they thought. They agreed to do exactly what the cat said, to save themselves. Puss went ahead and saw some men and women reaping grain in a field. My good fellows, you can reap later, but listen to me now. The king is coming this way and he'll make mincemeat of you unless you say that these fields belong to the Lord Marquis of Carabas. Puss announced. The reapers were very puzzled, but they definitely did not want to become mincemeat. They promised to tell the king that the fields belonged to nobody but Lord Marquis of Carabas. Puss went ahead and warned everybody to tell the king that the land belonged to Lord Marquis. The people thought that it wouldn't be right to mess with Lord Marquis. They decided to do exactly what the cat asked. But Puss had still more work to do. Huff! Puff! He ran all the way until he reached a huge castle. Can you guess whose castle it was? Yes! The castle and all the lands belonged to a fierce and powerful ogre. But Puss was not scared of the ogre. He knocked at the castle door. Blim, blam. Two guards opened the door. I'd like to pay my respects to your mighty master, said Puss. The guards knew that the ogre loved anybody who admired him. So they let Puss in at once. Puss bowed low to the ogre. I have heard much about your great powers. Is it really true that you can transform yourself into any animal you wish? Asked Puss. Even a lion? Watch me, said the ogre. Right before Puss's eyes, he transformed himself into a mighty lion. He roared so fiercely that Puss sprang up the curtains in fright. The ogre laughed loudly. That's amazing, said Puss. But I bet you can't turn yourself into a small creature. That's the most difficult thing in the world. I can, said the ogre. No, no, it would be impossible for a mighty ogre to turn into something like, uh, for instance, uh, a mouse, said Puss. Oh, really? asked the ogre, snapping his fingers. Boom! The ogre became a tiny mouse and scurried across the room. Quick as lightning, Puss pounced on the mouse 
and ate it in one gulp. Puss licked his lips. He clapped his hands three times and summoned all the people living in the castle. The ogre is no more, Puss announced. Will you accept Lord Marquis of Carabas as your master? He is kind and just, good and generous. The guards, maids, cooks, servants, and everyone else in the castle looked at Puss in surprise. But they nodded at once. They had never really liked the ogre anyway. Puss ordered everyone to prepare a feast for Lord Marquis and his very special guest, the king himself. The coach with the king, the princess, and my master will be here soon. I have to wake up the ogre right away. What? Who woke me up? What are you doing here, cat? How dare you disturb me? I have heard that you are a master of magic and can turn into any animal. Is that true? That's true indeed. I can prove it if you have any doubt. I would like to see. Can you do it? Turn into a lion, please. No problem. Whoa! How scary! Enough! I believe you! I really believe you now! Well, did I prove how great I am? Indeed, indeed. But if I ask you to turn into a tiny mouse, I bet you'll not be able to do it. <laughs> That's so easy. Watch me. Help me catch this mouse before it turns into an ogre again. Hooray! Now my master owns this castle. I'm smart and handsome. I'm the one and only Puss in Boots. Meanwhile, the king travelled through the countryside, speaking to the people. He was very surprised to learn that almost all the land around him belonged to the young man by his side. When the king's coach finally reached the castle, Puss ran out to welcome them. Welcome to our humble abode, Puss said to the king. The king gulped. The castle was bigger and even more stunning than his own. Puss led them straight to the huge dining hall. The table groaned with the weight of roast chicken, rabbit stew, mince pies, smoked duck, and hundreds of other dishes. The king was in seventh heaven. After eating the great feast and sipping the finest wine he had ever tasted, the king said. My dear Lord Marquis, I'd be delighted if you would marry my only daughter. Marquis smiled at the princess. I will if the princess wishes to live with me, said Marquis shyly. The princess was so happy that she wanted to dance all around the castle. She blushed in delight and nodded. They married and lived happily ever after. And so did Puss, because loyal Marquis made him a lord of the castle. Puss enjoyed great feasts every day, and did not go after rats or mice any more, except now and then, when he wanted some fun. 